And it was great fun. I mean, some people will have you think that we were all sitting around discussing discussing Niche and, mm. you know, Jean-Paul Sartre. No. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lot of fun. The, the, the movement was called the New Romantic. Yeah. Which I think is a, is a, you know, people know what punk was. Yeah. People know what a soul boy is. What, what do you think a New Romantic was? Well, it was because the, the whole, we'd gone from punk, and, and most of the punks became the, you know, I was a punk, Steve Strange, Rusty Egan, all those guys were punks. And it's sort of, when punk started to kind of fall off the edge, this new sort of movement came about. And I, I think, for my money, the biggest influence would probably have been Bowie, Iggy Pop, Lou Reed, that whole kind of Berlin avant-garde thing. You had Kraftwerk, La Düsseldorf, and you had sort of edgier kind of uh, Ultravox Systems of Romance, one of my favourite albums with John Fox as the lead singer. Love Midge as well, but John was the original. And all of a sudden, this whole movement really... You know, Depeche started in Basildon, Duran in uh, yeah, Human League. Yeah. So there was... It, and, and the clothes that went with it were quite avant-garde. I mean, you know, sometimes we look like Captain Scarlet and sometimes we look like Robin Hood. Who could... Yeah. Who, who would know what it was from month to month? Did you take much persuasion? Because I think you're quite a down-to-earth guy, aren't you? I mean, did you take yeah. much persuasion to get into some of those clothes? Uh, well, my mates... T- <laughs> would, would you, they was, my mates from those days and from school are still my mates to this day and I've known some of them since I was what four or five and so we go back a long way and they I was going come on we're going down the Blitz Club but you've got to dress up a bit and they were like no way Tom no way so I'd be dress, dressed up with me ballet slippers and everything else and they'd be looking pretty conventional and then it was up to Steve Strange whether he allowed you in the club or not so uh, he once turned away Mick Jagger and uh, and I said to him, I said, what have you done? You've turned away Mick Jagger. Well, he just didn't look quite right. I said, I don't care what you look. It was Mick Jagger. You know, I wanted to meet Mick Jagger. And um, so, but it was a good scene. It was a, it was a great scene. I mean, I, I was massively into it, actually. Uh, you know, we were in a band and you wanted to stand out. And that's what being in a band is all about. You want to stand out from the rest of the crowd. But it was it was a good... I think it was a great movement around the UK musically. Uh, it was a good time. Which brings us to the present day and on the road with Culture Club and Heaven 17. Yeah. Uh, when, when is this happening? It's happening in December. Starts on December the 3rd in Dublin. I've got all the, and it goes through uh, to the London O2 on Sunday the 15th of December. So I think we should sing a Christmas song then. Absolutely. Absolutely we should. It's going to be great because I've known the Culture Club boys... Uh, or most of them since the early Blitz days. Well, you must have known George when he was, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, at the Blitz Club. Yeah. Just trying to be fa- trying to be famous, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was there, John Moss was there, uh, Mikey and Roy I know anyway, and uh, uh, Martin and, uh, and Glenn I've known from Heaven 17 for years and years. We're always bumping into each other at festivals. And... Um, great bunch of lads. I mean, great. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And they're doing hits from their two biggest albums, I'm going to be doing stuff from True and Parade, which are two of my favourite albums, actually, Spando albums. And then Heaven 17 are doing the same thing. So it's a night catalogue of hits. What's your earliest memory of George? Do you remember the first time you saw him? Because I'm sure that would have been a memorable occasion to see boy George in his... Well, he, he was... He used to... Get, he was the he used to take the coats. He was the hat check boy, or the coat check boy. This was a small club Blitz. in I think it was Wardour, Wardour Street, wasn't Just, it? The Blitz it was, um, in Soho, anyway. Well, Billy's was the first club, and then. Um, the Blitz Club, just off of Hope and Kingsway. And it was a wine bar. And it was a wine bar during the day. And then I think it was Steve and Rusty went along and said, look, you know, what do you do at night? And they said, well, we don't do anything. I said, well, look, we can take it over. We can bring however many people in and we'll control it. We'll give you a cut of the door. So they said, yeah, it's a no-brainer. And so literally everybody who was everybody in London well, it was there in this club, and it was great fun. I mean, some people will have you think that we were all sitting around discussing discussing Niche and, mm. you know, Jean-Paul Sartre. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And, and George was there. I mean, he was always a striking, stunning, he's a stunning-looking man to this day. I mean, he really has got stature. Yeah, and, star, uh, star quality about it. He has got star yeah, quality, yeah. and, and he, he, looks, he looks amazing, actually. He looks really amazing. He's had his troubles, mm. as we all have, but he's come out of it, and he looks a million dollars. 